uh, down the paint. We got all our nail holes uh, filled, all of our trim caulked, and now we are painting. What I like to start with is the trim paint on the base, the doors, and painting the doors. And then while I'm doing that, Rich is going to be cutting the ceilings, and John's going to be rolling the ceilings. So we'll get the trim done, the ceilings done, and then we can do the wall paint. So those are the three steps we like to do. What is cutting in exactly? When you when you cut into the like you cut your paint into the trim or you cut your paint into the wall. We don't use any painters tape. You need to get a good paintbrush. Use painters tape will be there forever. Um, and another thing I forgot to mention: when you have excess, uh, when you have a cut off piece of trim like over here, Rich missed. No, I got it. Oh, I missed that one. So again, well, that's gonna get covered by backsplash. Most of it is. Like something like this, you wanna make sure you prime that before you start painting, else you're gonna have to put like five coats of paint on it without it showing. So stuff like that, touch-ups and stuff, you wanna reprime them. Um, you wanna show some of your trim paint upstairs? Sure. So like, this is the trim, not painted yet. You can see like some of the putty holes. Put two coats of trim, uh, two coats of paint on the trim. Obviously, the second coat you're not really, uh, it's not as intense as the first coat, but uh, two coats on the doors, if not three coats, depending on how well they're primed before. Man, it looks nice. So, get all that done. Obviously, you can tell we don't have hardware on the doors yet. I like to keep my doors on while I'm painting them, just taking them off and Painting them off to the side, the both quads, all a waste of time. You just hold the handle while you paint it. These ones you have to take off because they intersect, so it's hard to get around. So I just took them off. But yeah, it's pretty much it. After the, the first coat, the second coat would fly a lot quicker. Right. And that's it. Waiting for Rich to get the second coat of ceiling done. All right, let's get to it. about cutting in for painting. Uh, the whole point of cutting in is to get the areas that the roller can't get to uh, nice and easy for the roller person like John. Um, and that way they don't have to worry about touching the trim or touching the ceiling. Down here in the basement, we don't have a ceiling, so it's not a problem. But if we look into like the corners here, I started cutting in here. You know, you just take, this is like a two inch, two and a half inch brush. And you just kind of take it, you know, get a little bit and go up and down in that corner. So that way John doesn't have to worry about hitting the roller on this wall. So I'll do it on both sides of the corner, real nice and easy. That's the easy stuff when it comes to cutting in. You're also gonna cover any exposures, outlets, light plate switches, there's one over there. You know, so again, you don't want the roller rolling over that because you're going to, you know, get all the fuzzy stuff on the, uh, the roller and then it doesn't look good when you, um, put that against the wall. Yeah, you'll end up getting stuff in your paint. Yeah, in, in your paint. Thank you. Um, so if we come over here, let's talk a little bit more about cutting in. This is like the hardest part of painting um, when you have to go against a different surface, whether it's the ceiling with a different color paint, a wall with a different color paint, or in our case, we have trim all over the place. So you got to go against the trim. Um, this is definitely uh, what most people find the hardest. You don't want to use painter's tape Everybody says that if you're a real painter, you don't use painter's tape because it takes forever to set it all up and it doesn't even work that well. So what you're gonna do is take your brush, dip it just a little bit into the, the paint. And then what I found that was kind of counterintuitive to me is um, I'm gonna wipe the paint off of the side that's actually gonna be against the trim or against whatever I'm painting against, right? So I'm gonna paint like this. So I'm gonna wipe the paint off here. So there's no paint on this side, on the side of like the trim. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna almost treat this brush like a marker, okay? It's kind of interesting. You're normally gonna go like this, like 
you know, that's normally how you're gonna work with a brush. In this case, I'm gonna go kind of like this and fatten out that brush, almost like it's a marker, a felt marker, and just drag it right up against the trim. So let's kind of do that. So I'm gonna dip. You don't need a ton of paint. I'm gonna wipe it off here. And then I'm gonna go up here and let's see if I can get it good with the video on me. Pressure's on. Yeah. So you wanna get like a nice bead of paint going. John's blocking my light. Try to get a good shot, man. And then you just bring it down along the side and it's Ooh. almost gonna just bump up against where you're going. You don't want it to bump up against too much, but just a little tiny bit and you can kind of see the bead of paint. And then if you get, you know, you'll get a hang of it, go, you know, test it out in a closet first and somewhere that it's not a big deal. Um, and you'll get the hang of how the paint rolls and that kind of stuff. So the sides of doors, like the tops of, or the sides of window trim are pretty easy. Let's go talk about the baseboard. It's a little bit harder on the baseboard. First of all, if you're on like a hard floor, like we're on here, concrete, get some knee pads. You're going to save yourself a lot of ache. You know, you can see down here, I already painted the trim uh, along the trim. Um, what you still need to do though, uh, I only got like the fine edges, but you still want to take like a brush, like a fat brush and kind of come across and give the roller, John, some space here, right? So I'm still gonna do this along the bottom, but that's pretty easy. Um, John, why don't you come over here and look at me this way. So same concept's gonna apply for the base trim. The only thing I will say about the base trim that I've found uh, is uh, you wanna use a lot less paint. You're working against gravity here. So if you have too much paint there, it's gonna keep seeping down. And next thing you know, you look back at your base trim and you're like, oh, there's a big puddle of paint there. So like, whatever you think is the right amount of paint, you need less, okay? You know, and you can, you can always go back and get more, but if you have too much there, you're kind of screwing yourself. So put a little bit on and same concept, you know, you're gonna wipe off, I'm gonna come this way. So I'm gonna wipe off where it, it's gonna to touch the trim. And then I'm gonna just work it in there again. Try to make that brush like a marker. Kind of fatten it up, nice and easy. That's about it. Oh, uh, get some nice light in there as well. Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be close to me using a headlamp. I love that thing. It's, yeah, no matter where you go, like you can still you, see. You see everything. So the headlamp's nice. We have a nice big rocket light over here, so you can use something like that. And that's about it, that's cutting in from another novice painter like myself. Right.